Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. Well, as we discussed the last week, the debt ceiling scam is behind us. That's right. I'm calling it a scam. Uh, you saw the reaction to the market as we predicted. If you got long uh, because too many people are bearish, no matter how crappy the news was, this market was going higher on this news. Uh, and I'm surprised the market uh, basically was was scared of this news. I mean, this was this was a done deal. This never was going to not happen. Uh, the politicos don't care about the future. They just want to keep printing money, and that's what's going to happen. And uh, you know, that's the bottom line. But this rally was not about positive news. Okay, this was not a, a, a people buying because they think that all of a sudden this is great news and it's going to increase earnings. No, complete opposite. This was all about too many people bearish, covering shorts. It's the bottom line. It's not about um, anything else but too many bears out there, and they ran for cover. That's it. Now, there's a lot of robots out there trading as well, and they're likely to blame. I mean, you have a lot of AI quants. Uh, you know, they react very quickly to news. Uh, usually, the bots are wrong initially. And uh, this has been going on for a while, and it's going to continue, okay? The, the, there's news bots out there that trade, and obviously, they were waiting for this headline, and boom, they went in. Now, you know, I want to discuss, I'm going to discuss three things today. I want to discuss the economy, real estate, and, and finally, the stock market, because it's important to know. I, I, I just have some strong feelings about the market at this point. So let me talk about the economy first. You know, I continue to believe we're in a recession, Okay. Uh, and we're probably heading into the worst recession, much worse than 2008, the great financial crisis. And it's coming. I mean, it's to me, it's it's it's, it's baked in. It's but but obviously, there's a lot of data, a lot of data out there that just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's start with one of the biggest data that doesn't make sense, which is the unemployment situation. Okay, the unemployment rates came in at 3.7. It's the upper end of the range from you know, I guess. The one year ago from March 22nd, uh, March 2022, uh, it's going to burst higher, folks. Okay, let's look at what was written by the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, and as you see here, okay, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, what did they write? They talked about, you know, they, at first they talked, again, this is a biased, positive biased uh, organization, by the way. So you got non farm payrolls. Uh, unemployment, excuse me, increasing. But the unemployment rate rose 0.3% to 3.7%. Obviously, that's, you know, that's not, that's what the Fed wants, all right? That's what the Fed wants. Now, let's look into some key parts of this release. Now, the unemployment rate's increasing, okay? We got, you know, number of people losing jobs, okay? And people who are completed temporary jobs, Okay, these are people going going to be un, unemployed, increased by three hundred eighteen thousand to three million. That's a ten percent increase in unemployment. Okay, people who lost their jobs, and now people who lost their temporary jobs. Okay, all of a sudden, that's an increase of ten percent from the previous month. Okay, this these these numbers, what the government's saying is not making sense. Okay, then you know the the other thing that really is disturbing. OK, is, and, and this is how they calculate it. So the number of people not in the labor force, but that want a job, OK, is five point five million. That's what they say. Now. They do not count against the unemployment rate. Why? It doesn't make sense. OK, all of this data doesn't make sense. OK, it, it's it, it, it's ridiculous. So if you can't find a job and you're out of the labor force, but you want a job, you're not counted as unemployment. This is what this is what the government is telling you. Okay. So, but the bottom line, folks, is this: these surveys are absolutely. This is a disgrace. They make no sense. Okay. No one cares because no one is participating. There's nobody participating. The data is flawed. Okay. Take a look at this now. These are the participation rates. People that are participating in these surveys. These surveys are determining the economic future, or at least they're giving you, they're giving the Fed and, and Wall Street and, and the bots information to trade on, on, a, on a weekly, monthly basis, okay? Now, the key thing here, 
okay, as you can see here, these, these, are, these are the amount of people that are participating in these surveys. Now, this goes back to, uh, this only goes back to, to 2013. But I think if we went back even farther, it would be even more shocking. Okay, a lot more shocking. So let's take the let's take the jobs data, which is this jolts. Okay, that's that's mainly the job data. In 2013, which isn't too, that long ago, there were sick, almost 70 percent participation. Now you've got around 30 percent. Okay, think about that for a second. They send out all these surveys. Used to get 80, 90 percent participation from that group. Now they're getting 30 percent. How could this be accurate? It's not. It's not. It's fake. Okay. It's completely fake. This is this is this is absurd because they have they know this is happening and they're not changing it. Okay. This is absolutely disgusting. Okay. And then you know you got the other. Let's look at the 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 CES, which is consumer. Uh, it's, it's consumer price. Okay. This is the CPI. Okay. It used to have sixty four percent. Now you've got around forty. Okay, previous going back 10, 20 years, you had again, you had 80 plus percent participation. So, folks, what I'm trying to tell you is that this data comes along and moves the markets, but it's completely, there's no transparency here. They don't tell you who's even participating, they just give you the participant price, which is ridiculous. Could be a bot, could be an artificial intelligence bot, who the hell knows? Okay, so again, we use the data, but you can't rely on the data. That's why the data so the data is it's biased, always positive. So we have to discount this bias, positive data. So now let's let's look at real data that matters. Okay, we look at that ISM manufacturing. Okay, again, the the, the White House and Wall Street telling you the economy is okay. Okay, but here's the real economy. Okay, it's going down, folks. PMI is down. Okay, below fifty. PMI continues to contract. Okay, new orders continue to contract. Okay, it's it's unbelievable. Inventories are contracting. That means there's no demand, so the the, the companies are are, are uh, putting in inventory or declining inventory. I mean, backlog of orders contracting. You know, I mean, imports contracting. That means that's that's consumer. The real problem, folks, is the consumer. I've showed you this before. The conference board. There are a bunch of shills, shills for the government. Okay, they'll come out and say that the the uh, the consumer is fine. Okay, the consumer is not fine. Okay, and and this this conference board uh, is really inaccurate. But let's look at it. Okay, and and if you look at th this conference board, even they can't hide what's really going on. And then if you look at the University of Michigan, okay, and compare to those shills at the conference board. Then you really see what's really going on because University of Michigan is a, a lot more reliable. And as you can see here, they're showing what's really happening. On a longer term basis, we are in bad shape from a consumption standpoint. And remember, we are a consumer driven economy. OK, so this isn't good and it continues not to be good. Uh, and then what confirms this? Look at restaurant activity. Disposable income, restaurant activity. I mean. You know, this is what we look at. This is what we look at. So you're seeing uh, restaurant activity was that, you know, recovered from the pandemic. Now we're seeing it shrink again. And we're going to, we're going to, it's going to shrink significantly lower and it's going to sink into that sort of recession level. We've had a resurgence, but now we're sinking. Okay. And restaurants are going to suffer. I mean, if you go to some of these big cities, they're really suffering uh, and they're putting prices up trying to recover. But again, what does that do? Crushes, you know, the, the average person and, and, and sparks inflation. So it makes no sense. Uh, so, you know, we talked about personal, look, look at personal savings. Okay. These are, these are personal savings as a percentage of disposable income. It's plummeting folks. Okay. We had, Nobody could spend any money during the pandemic. It spiked, and it came down. It spiked a little bit, and now we're going down again. We're way below, you know. We're we're at a decade low, and and continue to go lower. This is not good. Again, consumer driven economy. This is not good.
Okay, so what does this all mean? It all means that, you know, the recession, okay, and again, I, I using conference board data, which is which is positive bias, but even this tells you what we need to that what, what is really going to happen. We are in recession territory. Hundred percent we're gonna have a recession. The numbers are skewed left and right. But folks, if you're an average person going to the, you know, going to the supermarket every day dealing with, you know, going to work every day, you know that we got problems economically, okay? And we're going to have worse problems going forward because, you know, look, the government's going to spend a lot of money. This, this They're going to pop up the economy by spending money, spend, but it's, it can't hide everything, okay? It can't hide everything. They're trying to hide it with government spending. They're not going to be able to, okay? We are, we are in bad shape here uh, economically, despite what these numbers say. Because look, here's the bottom line. PC inflation. Okay, this is these these are the inflation numbers that, as you can see here, uh, that really you need to focus on. Okay, that the Fed focuses on, and what the Fed's seeing is inflation going higher. Okay, now you look at this is the Dallas Fed again. This is the Fed numbers. You know, look, again, they they're they're they, they're bias positive, but they can't hide the fact that we're seeing inflation spiking higher. This is why the Fed is being very reluctant in sort of indicating they want to cut rates. I mean, they don't want to, they want to continue. Now, what, what happens, and I'm, I guess I'll just talk about the Fed now. What happens in this next Fed meeting is irrelevant. They're either going to raise 25 or they're going to go flat or they're going to stop. But either way, they're going to stop the raises. Again, another batch of potentially positive news in a, in a short-term positive blip for the market. But, it, but the Fed can't cut because they know what's happening, okay? The, 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 the White House created this, and, and the Congress created this debt ceiling crisis, this, this fake debt ceiling crisis. Then we had, obviously, this banking crisis, which was absolutely absurd. You could see here, looking at uh, what's going on today with the Fed. Okay, this is the Fed window, folks. Okay, this is the, the if, if you're a bank, and you're and you're you're getting you know deposits are flying out. There's a run in your bank. You just go to the Fed window and borrow. So you see, no one's borrowing. Okay, there's there's no there's no run in any banks because Yellen has basically guaranteed all deposits. So there's no banking crisis. Despite so this is again I've told I said this before. This is all about trying to get the Fed to cut rates. It's a game of chicken. Okay, so uh, and and who's going to win? Nobody. Everyone's going to lose. That's the bottom line. Let me just go into real estate here because obviously real estate is a key part of the economy and a key part of this whole consumer. Home prices are in decline, folks. I mean, there, there was, as you can see here, there's no getting around it. I mean, you know, home prices are coming. They're, you know, they're in negative territory. Uh, there was, as you can see here, there was a, a price jump in March. Uh, I don't know why. The only thing I can see here is if you look now here, okay, so you had prices, you know, year on year March prices jumping in some key markets like Miami, Florida, well, Florida in general, uh, New York, Chicago, doesn't make any sense. But look what's really going. Look at these, look at these prices in, in some of the hot markets, California, Los Angeles, look at San Francisco, San Diego. Okay, Arizona, where everyone was everyone was going to Phoenix. Yeah, Felix, Phoenix, and then Colorado, where all, everyone was going there. Dallas. Okay, if you threw Austin in there, you'd see Austin's also down. So these markets that are up cause this blip, I think, because obviously New York is a huge weight. But, and I as a big but, all of these markets that are up today are going to go down. Okay, there's no chance that these markets continue to go high. These these are bubble markets. Okay, let's look look at New York. Okay, this is the reason why this is a complete joke. Okay, as you can see here, you've got the New York tax base is collapsed, absolutely collapsed. Okay, how does New York State, which is you know quite frankly the the you know the state that's generating a lot of the profits for the country, okay, not the biggest, but is it is, so, well, it was the finance capital. New York's collapsed. People are leaving, and businesses are leaving. Everyone's leaving. 
So how does a state and a city, by the way, that's led by New York City, by the way, how does a city where everyone's leaving, where the tax base collapse, how do prices go higher? It's about supply demand, folks. And right now, just like they did in San Francisco, and I can tell you, I have a relative who lives in San Francisco, and I knew they were doing this. The landlords were keeping apartments empty, trying to create this whole idea of, of, of scarcity. They're doing that in New York, too. but It doesn't last. San Francisco is plummeting. New York is going to plummet. If you have an apartment in New York, sell it. If you can, sell it. Okay? It's not going to last. And then finally here, we got the financial investor. These are Blackstone. These are all these hedge funds that jumped into the housing market. They're out. They're getting out. They want you to think that the market is strong. You see them on C you see them talking every talking the market, talking their book. Okay, while they're selling, they want you to buy because they know it's collapsing. Okay, these are the largest purchasers of single family homes, despite what you're hearing. They have bought, they bought up all of the delta, all the growth. And now they're selling. They're out. They want to get out. They haven't got out yet, but they want out. They're not buying anymore. Okay, so don't be fooled. Okay, that's real estate about to collapse. Now let's talk stocks. Okay, look, folks, the, 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 the news just gets worse and worse. Here's the Russell versus the NASDAQ 100. I mean, what, what we, we've talked about here is this idea of... Uh, breath okay and the breath is the worst i think i've ever seen in my 25 30 year plus career i've never seen and this goes the only thing that i've heard of I've heard, we, we had this thing called the nifty 50 which i've discussed before google it nifty 50 this is exactly what but it's even worse because now it's a nifty 10 not nifty 50 and you've got an incredible bearish situation Okay, I mean, really, this is this is really bad. Okay, the, the, this this breath, this is this is always gonna this always ends badly. And then you've got more data. You got the the Nasdaq here, you know, outperforming. Okay, this is really incredible. The Nasdaq outperforming the Dow by the widest margin in history, in the history of the stock markets. The Nasdaq outperformed the Dow by twenty five percent since the beginning of the year. That's never happened before, ever, okay, ever. So these two indicators are as bearish as I've ever seen. Then you've got things like, you know, dividend stocks, which are kind of stock pickers, okay, value people, okay, huge divergence versus the S&P, huge divergence, okay, another, you know, negative uh, flag, okay. Now you've got, okay, what confirms everything here. Here are, here are the last... Uh, 10 years of stock returns, individual stock returns, the, the top stock returns, okay? So as you can see here, NVIDIA, which was surprising when I first saw this chart, over Tesla and Apple, that's because just the recent, that's the recent move in NVIDIA. That's how violent the recent move has been with NVIDIA. And as you can see here, it's all tech with a, few, with a couple of exceptions. NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, and then you got United Healthcare, Visa, and Alphabet. And you got, you know, Warren Buffett massively underperforming than the S and P. If you were in the S and P, you didn't you didn't do too well over ten years. Okay, you did okay, but not great. Versus, so again, this this is just confirming that the breath, the market is very, very, you know, market's broken. Okay, it's broken, and. You know, as I said before, the bottom line is, as I'm wrapping up here, the U.S. debt is going to be downgraded for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. We have got, uh, especially with this debt ceiling, we're going to be printing tons of money. The interest costs will continue to rocket higher because we're not going to see Fed cuts. We're not going to see rate cuts. And the interest expense of the U.S. is going to get into critical levels, and we're going to get downgraded. But, but again... <laughs> As we said before, here we go. You know, there's too many bears out there. Now the now the Wall Street Journal's recognizing. Okay, bearish bets are surging, surging. Everyone is long 
okay, the most crowded trade, you're long NASDAQ 100, you're long Apple, you're long you know, Microsoft, blah, 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 and you're short everything else. Okay, we saw that trade. Continue to put on, this is a, this is a very crowded trade. Everyone's bearish. This is why you get these reactions to this positive news. So bottom line is everything, you know, the economy is sinking. Real estate is sinking. Okay. The everything, we've got the worst breath, market breath in history. But market's not going down, folks. Okay. Market will continue to tread flat to higher because too many people are bearish. Way too many people are bearish. And there are less bearish today than they were late early last week, early early in the week, because you got they got flushed out on Friday. Massive flush out on Friday. So maybe some of the data will 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 come our way, but still there's too many people bearish. And unless we see shorts about to come down, amount of puts, you know, getting 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 taken out of the market, you know, we very little downside. Okay, but things are bad. Things are worse than bad. But Again, traders, this is a great market for a trader. You can trade the news, okay? Uh, but if you're an investor, you have to be careful out there.